did it, guys. We made it. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Now redubbed by Disney or current Lucasfilm or whatever you want to call it. Legends. Today, we have the grand finale to the Thrawn trilogy written by Timothy Zahn. And we still have so many stories to tell after this. But this big banger is ending. So, you know, no spoilers. We're wrapping up stuff with Master Sabaoth. The clone, by the way, if you haven't read the first one already and the second one, that's on you. This is a review for the third one. Assuming you already know what happened in the last two. Sabaoth is a clone of... of, of of an actual Jedi Master from the prequel era. So, yeah. We wrap up stuff with him. We wrap up stuff with Mara. We have things going on with Talon Card. We have things going on with Han. We have things going on with Luke. Thrawn, of course, we wrap all of that up in this book. So, if we're in the third one, and you already wanted to read the other two, then I don't need to tell you anything. This book is excellent. There's a reason these books are talked about so often in the Star Wars Legends community. These books are really, really good. So if you're interested in the slightest about Thrawn, about Mara Jade, if Heir to the Empire, if you enjoyed it, if you watched my reviews of it, if it seemed like something you want to read, then read it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to give you a synopsis. If you've read the other two, you're going to want to read this one. Um, as for uh, freaking people who have already read this book, well, then you already know what happens. But yeah, I'm going to get into spoilers now. But yeah, it, go read it. It's worth your time. It's money, money will be well spent, I promise you. I promise you that this entire trilogy, Heir to the Empire, Dark Forces Rising... And the last command, I guarantee you, it will feel more like Star Wars than any of the sequel trilogy. This is not a hate, though. If you enjoy the sequel trilogy, it's great. It's great for you. But I don't think you can deny how Star Wars these books feel. And so, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a Disney canon fan, I still think you'll enjoy this book immensely. These three books. If you're not, you're going to enjoy these books. What the fudge? Anyway, please go read them. Now I'm going to get into spoilers. Start off, there is an officer who is like super angry at the rebels or, or whatever. Or not the rebels, the New Republic. And he uh, he's out for blood. And Thrawn lectures him um, about his duty to the living. And not to the dead, because the whole thing is that he's like, these people, they've killed my friends and stuff. They've killed my soldiers and stuff. And so he's out for blood. And Thrawn says, don't be, I mean, just paraphrasing, of course, but he's like, don't be reckless. Your duty is to the people that are still alive, not to the ones that are dead. And I just liked it. I mean, the way it was actually told was a lot better than the way I'm saying it. But it was just a really cool scene. Another reason why I left love Thrawn. As I said, as of now... Reading all three of these, it is Emperor Palpatine, because he's always going to be number one, because I think um, not only in, I mean, it's Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader, but in all of fiction, they are probably two of the greatest villains of all time, but I put Emperor Palpatine above Darth Vader, so it's Emperor Palpatine, um, Thrawn, and then Darth Vader, top three villain. And although for adding extra fictional universes, Joker would be number one, but um, yes one of my next note was that Akbar has been reinstated as he should be my fish boy my man so in the first book in Heir to the Empire we have the famous um, line that I see everywhere if I look up like Thrawn quotes which is do you know the difference between an error and a mistake, Ensign? And then he ends up in the Ensign's death. 
it was because they had a failure. Something went wrong, and the Ensign didn't want to own up to his failure. He instead blamed other people for it. Because Thrawn would have easily forgave him. I mean, he just wanted him to acknowledge his mistake and think about how he can do better. But instead, he put the blame on other people. And that's what Thrawn could not tolerate. Because he didn't see how a man like that could grow in his new empire. So he got rid of him. But here, we have where our mission wasn't a complete success. But because of the Ensign's creativity, it leads to a promotion. Because Captain Pelion, he was expecting him to die the same way as the last guy. But no, because he was creative. Because he didn't blame others for his failure. He acknowledged straight up, yeah, it's on me. Because um, I didn't see any way to do this or whatever. But it just it shows the complexities of Thrawn. Because Thrawn actually cares about his people. He's the hero of his own story. He doesn't see himself as a villain. I mean, I guess neither did Emperor Palpatine or Darth Vader, but they knew they were using the dark side. And even Vader. Vader, Vader, he, he lost everything. He lost his kids. At least he thought he lost his kids. He lost his kids. He lost, uh, he lost his wife. He had nothing. All he had was the Emperor. So he worked for him. You know, he tried to justify it. You know? He, he, he tried saying, no, this is what's best for the galaxy. And he, you know, he did that for, you know, a few years. But then, you know, he kept saying the injustices, like what happened to the Wookiees and stuff. And eventually he just became more robot than man. He stopped caring. He knew it was wrong. He just didn't care. And, I mean, Emperor Palpatine. No, never mind. Emperor Palpatine, he knows he's evil and he likes it. It's, there's no, there's, there's nothing. Oh, fudge. I'm, there was an ant on my phone. I'm. During the summer, ants come all the time, so I was trying to flick it off real quick, and then it changed the, the camera. I'm really sorry about that. Forgive me. Um, we're not professional on this channel. Oh my goodness. Next note. Jason and Jaina are born. It's so freaking crazy. We get to see Jason and Jaina be born here, which is just so crazy because we know what will happen to them in the future. It actually, I was actually kind of sad because I was listening, I was listening, I was reading it, and I was just thinking, oh my gosh, this is such a wonderful moment for Han and Leia. It's such a cute moment, and to know the fate of these kids who are just born, right? We're gonna have multiple books with them as kids, and they're gonna be fine. And then we'll get to the new, and then we'll have new Jedi Order where they'll face a bunch of stuff, and we'll get to Legacy of the Force. And these kids that I got to see be born in these books. Your fate's not going to be nice. It just really sucks. Um, anyway. Oh, one thing I love about this book. Uh, they knew this was going to be the last book with Thrawn, I think, Timothy Zahn said. Because he is in the... He's, he's in this book... A lot more than he's in Heir to the Empire or Dark Forces Rising. Like, I counted how many times a scene of him showed up. He shows up way more often in this book than he does in the other books. I also like that Lando. He's not the biggest character, as he never usually is. But I like that he's still getting character development and that he's still a part of the gang. It's just nice, because I actually... I really like Lando. I think Lando's super cool. And I don't think, um... There's enough about them out there, so it's nice to have more of them. Oh, <laughs> my next note is just Han and Leia as parents. Yes! And Han's, I know. It was such... that I don't care, Luke and Mara, I'm sure they're going to be fantastic, but Leia and Han are the greatest couple ever. Um, And seeing Han, you know... Being a father now and needing to be, you know, it's just so cool to see that development and that progress in him. And, you know, Leia's like, I love him. I lo or, Leia says to Han, I love you. And what does he say in response, of course, you know, back to the Emperor Strikes Back, he smiles and he's like, I know. 
Because it's the same thing he said in episode 5. Oh. This line was super cool. In... Sh Shut up! <laughs> Sorry. Um, but in... Uh, there's a quote that I took, I wrote down because it was really good, where Thrawn is talking to someone. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. I mean, I don't even remember her at this point, but he says, I am not Darth Vader. I don't spend my men recklessly, nor take their deaths lightly. Right, because there was a smuggler dude who had these stormtroopers attack uh, the the smugglers and it, the smugglers ended up killing a bunch of them. But Thrawn didn't order that, and he was super pissed that that happened. And so, you know, because he's like, I don't take my men's lives recklessly like Darth Vader would or whatever. I care about my men, and I take their de and I don't take their deaths lightly. Um, and then we get to the end of the book, Luke. So I, I I looked up about it, or I I was after I finished the book, I I watched Matt Wilkins, who you should definitely subscribe to, by the way. I watched his video on the Last Command, and the reason that Luke is like that, there's two U's in the Luke, is because he wanted to differentiate them, and he didn't want to constantly say Clone Luke, so he just did that. But I just read it as Luke, uh, and I I didn't I was able to tell the difference fine. I just ignored the Luke part. Um, because if it was a movie, you wouldn't need to differentiate like that. You'd be able to see. So, uh, but how was Clone Luke created? This Luke. He was, he was created by the severed hand from the Empire Strikes Back that was left on Bespin. That created the clone and he has Anakin's lightsaber, which was crazy. Um, but by the end of the book, Mara is the one that kills the clone. And by doing so, she's freed herself from the order that the Emperor has had on her for these past, like, five years. Kill Luke Skywalker. Kill Luke Skywalker. By killing the clone, the voice is dead and she's free. So I thought that was really cool. Thrawn's... Oh. So the one thing I don't like, they rushed this freaking ending, Okay. It is so freaking fast. The book ends like that. I do not like... I'm very upset. It's fine. But the way it's just so quick, Thrawn dies. And I get it. It makes sense. Because, you know, he's super smart and he can plan for a lot. But he can't plan for things he didn't know about. He didn't know that the Nogri were betraying him. He didn't know that they, they, they were against him at this point. He didn't know. But to just have him get stabbed? Like... So quickly, and I don't know, it was kind of anticlimactic, and it just made me upset because Thrawn deserves better. But his final words are, is, but it was so artistically done, and then he dies. Um, and then finally, Luke and Mara, they have a touching moment, and knowing that they'll become husband and wife later is, you know, it's really cute. Um... Luke gives Mara his father's lightsaber. The lightsaber that he had in Episode 5 and Episode 4 that Obi-Wan Kenobi gave him. That was Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber he hands to her. And it was just a really nice uh, gesture. But overall, that is it for The Last Command. Up next, we get back to the Rogue Squadron series. And it's written by Michael A. Stackpole again. Uh, we haven't seen him since the first four Rogue Squadron series. So it'll be good to read him again. Um, and we have Isgard's Revenge, so I hope y'all look forward to that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, sharing episode a ton. We're finally done with the Holy Gospel of Star Wars, and now we can move on to more stories and keep going forward with this amazing, expanded universe. And I hope you guys will join me in on that journey. And if you haven't joined me already, I have previous videos that you can go check out, and I hope you'll join me uh, in past events. And in all things coming in the future. And I'll see you next time. Bye.